Well, she is considered one of the most respected and influential labor leaders of our time. Dolores Huerta broke more than a glass ceiling. She led a revolution in the farm fields of the Central Valley. Wait till you see her uh, still going strong. The Stockton native is showing no signs of stopping. We spoke with a civil rights icon about her lifetime commitment to social change and the phrase she made famous. <laughs> If anything, we are bringing the issue right into everybody's home, into everybody's organization. And so I don't think we're taking away from the issue. Si se puede. Yes, we can. Dolores Huerta turned that phrase into a battle cry. Pero aquí en Arizona no se puede. Mi respuesta para ellos fue, si se puede. Si se puede. And destined to define a moment. Yeah, my dad was a farm worker, he was a mine worker. Then he ran for the state assembly in New Mexico and he was elected as an assemblyman. My mother worked two jobs, actually, uh, when we were young, uh, so she, until she saved up enough money to start her own business. Her mother moved the family to the Central Valley. I consider Stockton my hometown. <laughs> Dolores excelled in school as a young girl, so much so that her teachers accused her of cheating. To this day, I have trouble writing. <laughs> You know, it, it just it was such a big uh, a psychological blow, I think. She would go on to college and become a school teacher herself. You would see so many of the farm worker kids would come into the classroom, and you could see that they were malnutritioned, that uh, they didn't have good clothes to wear, good shoes to wear. All that poverty found in these fields, some of the richest ag land in the United States. So Dolores took a leap of faith, quitting her job as a teacher to become a community organizer, mobilizing the workers in these very fields of the Central Valley. Dolores credits her mentor, Fred Ross Sr., an influential labor organizer in Southern California, for teaching her how to get it done. When I saw the presentation that Fred Ross gave us, I thought this is the way that you make changes, right? Now an activist, Dolores started to fight for the rights of Mexican farm workers and their families. In 1962, Dolores moved on to work alongside Cesar Chavez. Together they started the United Farm Workers Association. We were both very like-minded when it came to the mission of the organization uh, to empower people, to empower farm workers. Serving as the vice president of the UFW and raising 11 children, Dolores negotiated contracts, advocated for safer working conditions in the fields, and challenged the machismo culture at the time. It was Dolores who convinced Cesar to boycott grapes in the late 60s. Caesar wanted to boycott potatoes. <laughs> and I told Caesar, when people think of potatoes, they don't think of California, they think of Idaho. So, yeah, I won that argument. She would go on to successfully lead a national grape boycott. In the midday heat, that resulted a California legislation allowing farm workers to form unions and bargain for better wages. It should be called the heartache of agriculture. Even though she and Cesar were equal partners at the UFW, she regrets one thing. When we started the union, Caesar asked me, if it would be okay for him to be the spokesman. And I said, of course, he said. But looking back, I probably would have said, let's do it 50-50, okay? <laughs> she influenced people in power, often standing next to them, like Robert Kennedy, moments before his assassination. Dolores would continue leading demonstrations, including one in San Francisco, where a police officer hit her with a baton. He hurt me pretty bad, he you know, broke my ribs, and. Uh, my, my, my spleen was uh, pulverized, I couldn't even find it. He hit me so hard that it just burst. After a lengthy recovery, followed by the death of Cesar Chavez, Dolores left the UFW in 2002. She created the Dolores Huerta Foundation in Bakersfield. So we still have a long way to go when it comes to taking care of the farm workers in our country. Years after she first uttered the phrase, si se puede. Yes, we can. Yes, we did. Yes, we can. President Barack Obama gave her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And on a personal note, uh, Dolores was uh, very gracious uh, when I told her I had stolen her slogan, uh, Si se puede, yes we can. Uh, knowing her, uh, uh, I'm pleased that she let me off easy, because uh, Dolores does not play. That we can start to work together. We are a great country, and a selfish country, and a compassionate country. Dolores Huerta. Unfortunately, some of the people, I'm saying that all of them, the boycott continues. are spokespersons for the growers. A living civil rights icon.
Such an impactful life, and I loved her honesty during our interview with her, saying, like, I wish I had more of the spokesperson role, but you know what? Cesar Chavez Day, in many ways, is also Dolores Huerta right. Day, because yeah. she was such a pivotal figure. Such an inspiration. Turns 94 tomorrow. She ah. looks great. And through her foundation, and she's still going strong, she continues to advocate for farm workers, of course, immigrants, women's rights, LGBTQ community, and other causes as well. And uh, we thank you, Dolores, for sitting down with us. She's amazing. Happy yeah. birthday. No doubt.